uh, Stuart was up on the bridge playing a scene with this young boy, and he was trying to tell this boy who had killed his son, and he grabbing him and he's saying, I hope someday that, uh, that you have a son. And someday, when a man comes along and kills one of them, I want you to remember. I... Well, he was doing this very emotional scene, and I'm down there fly fishing under the bridge. I love to fish. And I hooked a trout, and the trout's jumping and making noise, and I'm scared to death that it's going to interrupt the scene. And so I'm sticking the pole under the water, trying to keep the trout under the water so he won't jump around. Well, finally the scene is over, and I'm, I have now put the trout on a string, stringer, and I'm wading up through there, and Mr. Stewart walks down over the bank and sits down in his chair. And as I get up near him, he says, uh, uh, Jim, uh, uh, come over here. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, what the hell are you doing? I said, I'm fishing. He said, oh, yeah, well, I, I, I see that. But he said, well, let me ask you something. Why is it when I'm, I'm up there working so hard, you know, and, 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 you, and you get to go be down here fishing? And I said, Mr. Stewart, when I... <laughs> make the money that you're making and get to be a star that you are. I said, then I'll be up there working and you can come down. And he said, oh, well, you, you got a point there. Try you got to get out of I'm here. I'm trying to get out. Let go of my jacket, Ben. Go tell Liz I'm downstairs. downstairs. Tell her I'm in the car. Yeah. Tell her I got high. Hives. No, not high. No, no, but the moon, no, no. anything. Yeah. Well, get her in the car. Get and her. you get her downstairs. I'll get her in the car. I'll get her to the boat. Yeah. Get her to the boat. Yeah. There's the elevator. I know where it is. Well, yeah. don't push. I can get I know there. where it is. Well, you get in there. We went out and, and partied a little bit, and he said, would you like to do a movie with me? And I said, yes, sir, I'd, you know, I'd give anything to do a movie with you. And I mostly play heavies now, though. And he said, no, he said, you're going to do some comedy. I didn't hear any more from him for about three or four months. And one time, my, my agent said, go over and meet Jerry Lewis. And uh, I went over to Columbia, and uh, Jerry Lewis, is, while walking in the door, and he threw a script at me. And he said, go down and get four suits made. I said, for what? He said, you hillbilly, pea picker, so so so. He said, didn't, you, didn't I tell you that I was, you were going to do a movie with me? I said, yes, sir. But I said, a lot of people have told me that, and it didn't necessarily materialize. He said, well, I don't lie. And it was. It was a lead with he and, and uh, uh, Janet Lee. And I actually got to see firsthand what a, how a genius worked. What are you doing here? That's what I was just trying to find out. Hey, what are you doing here? Uh, well, yeah. Well, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I was just about to tell a little woman uh, I, I'm, uh, well, uh, I'm here on account of my horse. I was your, talking. Your horse? The, the, the vet. What, the, the vet? Yeah, that's my vet. Uh, the, you didn't leave. I'm sorry. Now, Dr. Miser. This is Anna. Anna, Dr. Miser. You look familiar, Dr. Heavy Man. No, 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 no. no. Well, I, never, I don't. Listen, uh, why don't we go to my office and talk about it? No, uh, no. No, wait, 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 honey. I was going to tell him about his office. You got Susie in there, the tiger. The Tibetan tiger claw. Susie! Oh, Susie! Oh, no, no, no. I, I uh, came here to see my doctor. My court. I'm going to court. I know her. Yeah. Why don't you? And I'll uh, You go with him, Anna. I'm double horse. I mean, uh, my park is. Uh, I'm going to take care of my horse, and I'm going to come right back, honey. You're... He said, What part do you want to play? And I said, I'd like to play the homosexual. He said, Jimmy, you've, you've played the mean SOBs and, and everything all your life and the rapists and killers and everything else. Nobody's going to buy the fact that you're a homosexual. I said, I'm an actor. I don't have to be a homosexual to play it. I'm an actor. And so he said, no. And so uh, he went back to Hollywood. And he said, everybody that auditioned was a Truman Capote. And so I shot my own screen test, sent it to him. And he said, oh, my God, you can do it. I said, my price just doubled. We can't have people believing that Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the bridge because of a man, can we? This way, people will think there's a baby somewhere. Something to show for all our trouble. Maybe I'll get to believe in it, too. I tried to tell him that it'd probably never happen again. I guess he didn't believe me. 
It ain't gonna be easy for you. You're, you're going off alone. Oh, I'll be back before long. I'm only 15. What do I know of the world? You want, I'll, uh, I sure be pleased to drive you to the bus. Well, that'd be right neighborly of you, Mr. Broxdale, sir. down here. No, I'm still in intensive care. Well, I sneaked out to make this phone call to you. Yeah. Well, I want you to talk some of that trash to Excuse me. I've got to make a very important call. You mind? Buzz off, fella. Yeah, honey. You know what I want. Yeah. Yeah, talk some of that lovey talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's good stuff. I hate to be yeah. rude, but this yeah. really is an important call. Will you, you kiss my ass? Oh, not you, honey. No, no. No, it's some guy. Oh, no, that's it. Oh, don't make me breathe too heavy now. No, I gotta go get my pacemaker till tomorrow. Yeah, honey. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, that's the good part. Yeah, what? I'll call you back. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Darlene, is Marty there? Lunch? Hell, it's only 11 o'clock. Where's he having lunch at? God damn, I don't give a crap what he said. Where's he having lunch at? Darlene, I'm gonna be dead in 24 hours. Now, where's he having lunch? Pass up the... We go back, way back to the days of gun smoke and everything when he played uh, the, the blacksmith. All right, hold it right there, Sam Beal. Cloudy, I'm not Sam Beal. Mr. Quinn, it's you. What are you doing out here? I'm looking for Sam Beal. Soaking wet. You better go home and change your clothes before you get sick. Oh, no, I can't leave Mr. Dakota. Bert is a very talented director, very, very talented actor. They're just finding out how talented he is as an actor. I was fortunate enough, he made me associate producer on Gator and The End, and he had enough faith in me while he was in front of the camera to uh, overlook the shooting. They mate for life, you know. You're kidding. Oh, sure. I wish I was dead. The Swans. I wanted them making love, the swans, and Bert's sitting there very despondent and sitting on the bank. I thought it'd be very interesting if we had the swans. Um, <laughs> if we had the swans uh, 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 mating. And uh, so we couldn't figure out how to do that. We got a skin diver and we got him under the water and tried to hold the duck's legs and hold one duck on top of the other duck. Not a duck, it was a big swan. The damn swan nearly beat the guy to death. <laughs> and uh, that did not work. They were going to wire their legs together. <laughs> I said, you can't, we can't do that. They finally got enough. I said, we only needed just a quick cut because Bert looks. He's despotted. Everybody's uh, making love, <laughs> even to the swan. And he's, and he's got a terminally ill. It's a black comedy, needless to say. So, Dom, De <laughs> Dom DeLuise is sitting on the bench, <laughs> and the ducks swim. <laughs> the swans swim by, and one of the swans decided to come up on the bank, and Bert, Macho Bert, <laughs> picks up the swan and throws his ass back in the water, and it said, keep it rolling. So we kept the camera rolling. And the duck, the swan swim by again. And they come back up on the bank again, went up. And Dom Delaway's 
is going to be real macho like Bert and proceeds to go down there and the swan attacked him. <laughs> and 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 Don, Don Deluise took off like a, a, a three-year-old with a bull behind him. You told me you were quitting after this picture so you could trade it off against doing this ridiculous stunt. Isn't that true? You're crazy, you know that? I'll tell you one thing. You're crazy, you know? I don't want to hear you. No, listen, well, you get your hands, hands off you me. You dumb, dumb jackass. You shut Sonny. your drunken mouth. Listen, don't you mess up a word. Sonny! Sonny! Oh. Oh. 172 motion picture fights. It's the first time you ever hit me. That's what a bitch can hit. <laughs> Ironic thing happened. When we finished Hooper, we were at the cast party. I went up to Bert to thank him again and hug his neck. And I said, thank you so much for letting me share a marvelous experience with you again. Because we've done probably 10 or 12 shows together. And he hugged my neck and he said, don't thank me. He said, in a year's time, your name will be a household word. Now, why he said that, I don't know. And I got the Dukes. And about a year later, the part of Roscoe P. Coltrane made me a household word. Just a good old boy. Never mean it no harm. Be gone, you never saw any trouble with the